All right, welcome back to another restoration. Uh, this time's a 1989 Peugeot Avoya. Uh, it's a French bike, French racer. Um, yeah, I've had it in my uh, cupboard for way too long, so it'd be good to finally get it built, go on some rides. Um, yeah, there'll be tips and stuff along the way. Um, the timestamps of the section in the description below. Um, yeah, so hope you enjoy. Cheers. All right, just a bike I had in my cupboard for a while. Um, I didn't film me taking it apart because uh, it was before I started doing videos. Um, but basically, I just sourced all the parts everywhere. Um, I'll put a full list in the description so you can see. But yeah, finally time to build it up. Um, yeah, this is the closest bike I could find online. Uh, Peugeot Avoya. Something different, let me know. Cheers. All right, so I'm going to take off all the parts and give them a clean up. I'm actually going to be trying out the vapor rust this time. Let's just see how that goes. Um, but yeah, you can just see me here taking off all the bolts, putting in those little trays again. Good idea just to keep everything organized. And then just taking everything apart and taking all the, the rusted bolts off is going to help you um, be able to clean it a little bit easier. All right, yeah, here's just the bucket I'm going to use, just a large bucket. So I basically got this vapor rust I want to try because I've heard really good things about it. It works really quick and really well. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I got the five-in-one concentrated mix. So basically, it's five parts water, one part of vapor rust. So just mixing it through here in a big bucket. But it also says on the back you can just soak it for however long you need to get all the rust off and then you can also wash it and then cover it in vapor rust again to protect it but yeah I'm not going to do that I'm just going to wash it and use WD-40. Uh, here I'm basically just uh, scrubbing some of the rust off just to help the vapor rust. It says on the back that you don't really need to do this at all but I don't know just old habits I'm doing it anyway. Um, here's a, a rusted stem bolt that's rusted really bad, so it'll be good to see how it works on this. And then I'm just uh, giving all the bolts a light brush as well with the with the wire brush, trying to get some of the rust off, try to help it before I soak it. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. And yeah, just mixing through the vapor rust and then just covering it in those little trays there. You can kind of see that's what it looks like. The rusted, the rusted bolts. Um, here you can't really see the rusted areas, but uh, I'll show you in a further down the line. Um, and then just while that is kind of soaking, I am cleaning up the other bits. So cleaning up the chain ring, just using WD-40, a wire brush, and an old rag. Um, I tend to use a, a brass brush as that will help minimize the damage. Um, so yeah, just be careful when you're doing that. Um, but yeah, just really yeah, just putting in the putting in the work, cleaning things up. Yeah, I kind of just wiped all these down. I think what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to kind of sand them sand them down a little bit just to get uh, get rid of all the uh, little nicks and the little scratches, just to kind of polish it up a little bit. But yeah, nothing too crazy. And then just yeah, just cleaning the pedals here. Same thing, just wire brush over D40, getting all the dirt off, getting all yeah all the grease off before. I start saying some of the bits. Same with the same with the handlebars here. Yeah, you can actually do a lot with just a brush and WD-40. Actually, gets a lot of the gunk off. Um, here you can see after two hours, I had a little check-in time of how the bolts are doing. Um, but yeah, basically you can't you can see that nothing's happened right now. So I decided that I'm just going to soak it circuit a bit longer yeah two hours nothing but here you can see the parts the stem and the rust on the back of the brake calipers um but yeah nothing nothing happening at yet so we'll just let it soak and see how it goes all right so while it's soaking i'm going to t-cut the frame all right here just t-cutting the frame um yes yeah, t-cut is basically a color restorer uh so what you're doing is uh it's a cream that has a very fine abrasive in it um, and what you're doing is taking a very very thin layer off your top coat and what that does is it gets rid of all the scratches, all the blemishes, evens everything out out, and kind of helps refresh in your, your frame um, and just be careful when you're doing it, just, uh, I stay, tend to stay away from the decals um, so it doesn't take those off but yeah it's going to take you a while before it does that but 
I, yeah, I tend to stay clear of the decals just in case. Uh, all right, here, just checking on the bolts again. I think this has now been uh, a few more hours. So you can see that it's, it's slowly starting to work. That uh, stem bolt is starting to clean up a little bit. Um, and I'm just here, I'm just agitating uh, the bolts, moving it around to kind of help some of the rust kind of fall off. Um, but yeah, after a few hours, I'd say maybe around six hours all up, um, you can see that it hasn't, hasn't worked that much. So what I decided to do is uh, I'm just going to soak it overnight for 24 hours and then, and then see how it goes the next morning. All right, quick tip here is uh, put all your all your uh, parts in containers with lids so the vapor rust doesn't evaporate. Um, I think mine evaporated a little bit, so this is why, why I ended up doing it. Um, but yeah, just put in an airtight jar, you can close it off. Um, for the Chibani, a uh, little container, what I use is just um, glide wrap and just put it over the top, just make sure it's covered, and that seemed to work. All right, here's the next day. Um, time to check out the vapor rust out. Just pulling out the stem. You can see like it still has a lot of rust on it, so not too much changes there. But I think for this one, I'm going to... I'm going to be able to sand it off anyway. And then here's the bolt. There was actually rust all on the threads. All that came off, so I was pretty pretty pleased with that. And then here is the, the front mech. Um, you can see there's still rust on the bolts when you pull it out and the, and the spring, but the spring had no rust. And then here, um, brake calipers, you can still see the, there's rust on here. And what I did was I ended up just putting my thumb on it and all the rust kind of just came off. So I was really kind of surprised about that. And I was like, oh, okay, what I need to do is probably just need to wash it and then all the rust will kind of fall off. So that's kind of what I did. Um, so yeah, here's another tip. Um, if you live here in Australia, um, you can get a little strainer from Daiso for 280. It's pretty good, has a little handle. Um, people probably use it to cook, you know, chips or something, deep fried chicken nuggets, I don't know. Um, but yeah, you can use that as good to strain bolts. Um, yeah, and here, just pulling out the bolts. Uh, yeah, just filtering the bolts, pulling it out. But yeah, I think overall the bolts came out pretty clean already. Um, there wasn't like any brushing you need to do, but I'm going to give these all a rinse underwater, clean it up, and then uh, see how they kind of come out. All right, so all, all washed here. Um, but yeah, you can see all washed and all the rust kind of just kind of just brushed away and fell off. Um, so you can just see me here just wiping it down with WD-40, um, cleaning it up. Um, but yeah, I was really I was, I was really quite surprised uh, by how well Evapo rust worked. The bolts came out super super clean. Um, you know, where where the rust has pitted the metal, you're not going to save that, but everything else is good. You can see those springs are completely clean, or well, the rust came off. Even for the front mech, you know how there was rust on the bolts? You can see they kind of cleaned up and came off as well. So pretty happy about that. Um, with the stem, some of the rust came off, but there was still rust on here. So maybe you could soak it for longer and it would, would take it off but I don't know I didn't do that I was going to sand off anyway uh, yeah the good thing about the vapor rust is that you can reuse it so what I'm going to do is just try to sift it get all the sift all the dirt out and save it and reuse it another time um, here quick tip if you don't have a funnel what you can do is just end of a bottle I guess pretty self-explanatory but you just cut off the end I use a little bit of uh, kitchen paper as a filter just to filter it through and then you just pour um, all the old vapor rust back into a container a tight container yeah and that's it that worked pretty well for me all right just cleaning up the parts here so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sand down some of the, the parts you can see some of the parts had water damage most of the parts were pretty clean um, you know cranks and stuff had like scratches just overall scratches and I just want to give them a give them a once over just to help make them look a little bit better and make them look a little bit more uniform. So here I'm showing you 1,800 wet and dry, but what I end up using was uh, 600 and 800. 
Um, and I think sometimes I use 400 when the scratches were a little bit deeper. Um, but yeah, I just want to give them a freshen up. You know, it's not going to be 100% polished. Um, I'm sure I'm going to get comments from people that, uh, you know, that do it for real and get rid of all the scratches. But I just want to give them um, a little buff out um, just to make them look a little bit nicer. Um, so yeah, just make sure you wear gloves when you do it. You don't want um, sanded metal in your skin. Um, and then just have a little dish of uh, a little container of water next to you so you can dip the, the wet and dry. Um, and then just, yeah, I use paper towel to kind of clean it every now and then just to get rid of, uh, yeah, just get rid of the water um, and, uh, and the sanded off stuff. But um, yeah, it ended up working pretty well. I ended up, ended up doing uh, the cranks, the stem here, and uh, the front mac, the front of the front mac wet clamps, um, just to clean it up. Um, but yeah, I think it, they all turned out pretty good. Um, but yeah, it's really yeah, just putting up, putting in the effort and just doing it. Um, sanding usually yeah takes takes a little while you can actually yeah go and spend tons and tons of time on it but yeah i just want to make make sure they just uh they're looking good for what they are oh yeah and i did the did the handlebars too just the middle area um because the rest is going to get covered by bar tape anyway and then yeah i just clean it up with wd-40 again um but yeah you can see how it works putting all the the bolts back together now um, pretty straightforward. Sometimes you might forget where the bolts go, but if you yeah take video, take a photo, you know where the bolts go. But um, yeah, I've kind of done this so many times that I kind of know where they go, and usually they only go in a certain way. Um, so yeah, it's not too bad even if you forget. I think the main thing is just make sure you don't lose any of the parts. Um, and yeah, I also did the seat post as well. The seat post actually had some big gouges in it, but yeah, could clean it up a little bit um, but yeah you can see how it turned out I think they turned out pretty good all right putting the bike together um, here yeah just putting on the rear derailleur and the brake calipers on um, pretty straightforward didn't have any problems putting them on at all um, and then I put the back wheel on and I was like oh uh-oh um, the brake calipers actually didn't reach the back rim so basically with some older frames you're going to need long reach calipers so I was kind of kind of bummed about that a little hiccup but what I ended up doing was um, just using the old brake calipers and you can see um, yeah just clean, cleaning up the parts up again um, it did come with an old bell I ended up finding an old bell which is pretty cool um, but yeah you can see the brake calipers were pretty dirty so what I ended up doing was yeah you know just give them a quick clean um, taking all the bolts off washing them I didn't put a vapor rust on these just because they were in pretty good condition just dirty um, but yeah you just yeah just clean them all up with WD-40 get all the grease off get all the dirt off um, clean up the toe clips as well because I'm going to put toe clips on this bike I think you can get a little bit more a little bit more power um, yeah, just using a, a brass brush again, and then um, yeah, cleaning up the bell as well. Um, yeah, the bell was pretty cool actually. It was a Japan-made bell. It had a little bit of a, a little Japan stamp on the end of the the little latch there. It sounded pretty good, so I ended up sanding the the top of it with uh, 600, 800 again, and just buffing it out protecting it with uh, WD-40 and yeah looks good you can hear the noise of the bell here but yeah pretty cool um, yeah I didn't end up using this bell for this build but I ended up putting on my other other dad bike my cargo bike um, and yeah probably needed more for that one than this one and yeah here just putting uh, yeah putting everything back together um, all right, time to put the bike together. Here, just putting on the bottom bracket. Um, yeah, just make sure you grease it up. For this one, I used, I think the width was 117.5, just a bottom bracket I already had. Um, with these cranks, you can probably do 115 or 113 even, depending on your chain line, um, just for 
for people who like to ask about bottom bracket sizes, um, there you go. It's a 68 standard on the bottom, BB width. Um, here, yeah, just putting on the, the handlebars, the stem, the brake calipers, um, the front and rear derailleur, the brake levers, um, putting on the wheels, the rims line up this time, so it's pretty good. I gave the shifters I forgot about, but I pulled out the old shifters. Um, so what I'm actually doing, I'm running a, I'm running an eight speed on the back. Um, so I'm going to make it friction, uh, make it friction based. Um, and I didn't actually have to bend the, the back drop hats at all for some reason. I don't know why I could just kind of like squeeze the, the eight speed in there. So, um, yeah, that ended up working pretty well. And then, um, here. You can see me just kind of truing the wheel a little bit um, and then yeah just putting on the brake pads on um, easier to put uh, brake pads on when you kind of true the wheel first so it doesn't kind of like mess up mess up um, mess up later when you put in the, the brake cables um, yeah here just putting on the, the gear cables uh, make sure you stretch them out kind of stretch them out like a guitar string just hold one end with the thumb and finger, finger and then pull on the other, other end just to kind of like stretch the tension out. Um, but basically this is going to help you stop having to re, re, refine your gears after the first few rides. But yeah, pretty straightforward here. I think everything, everything was working pretty well. Yeah, not too much trouble, troubles here. Yeah, just adjusting the old brake. Uh, old brakes, making making sure they they work well. Um, but yeah, I didn't actually have too much problems. And then here, just uh, putting in the the brake housing and brake cables in. Um, yeah, once again with the brake housing, it's better just to measure it measure it uh, a few times, and then make sure you know turn the handlebars, make sure there's enough slack on the the brake housing, um, and then cut it short if you need to need to. Um, and then here, just putting on a chain, pretty straightforward, no real problems here. And then didn't have to index the gears for this one because it's friction based. Um, so yeah, it kind of went pretty smooth for me. <laughs> um, yeah, and then just cutting up the cable ends, cutting up the cables. Um, greasing up the, the cranks here, putting on the pedals. Um, no real problems here. Yeah, just make sure you grease them up so they can come off. And then I put a little caps on the cranks there. Um, here, I'm about to put bar tape on, so I just want to make sure my uh, levers are even. Um, so yeah, just use a tape measure, you put across the top, and that helps. And then here, just yeah, put it on bar tape. Um, this time, I decided to go from the bottom to the top, wrapping towards the inside. Um, that's what most people do. Um, but yeah, pretty straightforward. There's tutorials out there on how to do that. Um, to get the best job, basically, you just want to space it out um, evenly and then just have a clean cut at the end of where you put the tape. But yeah, not too much trouble here. But here, yeah, here, here you can see I wrapped the bars as even as I could um, with, a, with uh, a lot of overlap because the bar tape was long um, but what I ended up doing was just re-wrapping it anyway because I wanted um, a slightly thinner profile so yeah a little bit OCD on my part but I don't know I, I'm gonna be riding with this so I gotta be happy with it um, and then here just yeah putting on the cable ends um, yeah people <laughs> always talk to me about cable ends um, of not putting them on but yeah I, put, I actually put them on just like after the bike build but here I put I show you in the video putting them on. You just clamp them down with a with a pair of pliers. Pretty straightforward. And then here, uh, just putting on the toe straps. I end up getting new toe straps. I think it was worth it. Um, just to freshen up the bike a little bit. New toe straps and new uh, new handlebar tape. Um, and then yeah, I just put my foot in just to kind of like size it up. Pretty straightforward. Make sure it feels comfortable. Not too loose. Not too tight. Make sure you be able to get your feet out if you get stuck um, you can always tighten it as you go but when you're first riding just try it out like this 
All right, that was the last thing, so here's the new bike. that's the video uh yeah super hyped with how it turned out i think it turned out super clean um rides really well pretty light with the new wheels um changes gears pretty smooth as well just friction shifting so it's as smooth as you make it but yeah let me know what you think in the comments below um or hit me up on the dms on instagram yeah hope you enjoyed the video and yeah happy holidays and stay tuned for the next one cheers